What's going on guys, Foresight Capital here, dropping in with a brand new Palantir video, and it has been three months since my last Palantir update, so there's a lot to cover on the price action point. And interestingly enough, Palantir is trading within 2 or 3% of where it was when I made my last video, but a ton has gone on with the price action. So we're going to dive right into the chart here today, and then we'll talk about some of the fundamental aspects in videos later on in the week. Back on April 3rd when I made my last video, Palantir was trading right around the $24 per share range, and we closed Friday heading into the 4th of July at $24.40, so up just a couple percentage points. But over the past couple of months, we've seen a mega sell-off all the way down to the $18 per share support level, and then a huge run-up basically since the middle of May and the last earnings report where we were yet again rejected by the 2770 level and fell right back down to 2460. What's been very interesting about this Palantir run is that we are seeing that a lot of the support and resistance levels are still holding true even months down the line. So if you're a short-term trader, you've been able to make a lot of money on the volatility of this stock if you're trading around these key support and resistance levels at 2770, 2460, 2260, 21. And if you're a long-term investor, you had the best opportunity heading into Q1 earnings where the stock was way oversold, briefly dipped below $18 per share to really scoop up shares at a great cost basis for the future. Now I've held and I still maintain that my price target for Palantir is somewhere between $30 and $35 per share in the short term. A lot of analysts out there are starting to up their price targets for Palantir while there are still a few skeptical ones that have Palantir sub $20 per share. However, I think that we're not really going to see that price point again unless we see a broad market sell-off. And it really took a growth and tech stock sell-off for Palantir to see that sub $20 per share range, but we can see that it really quickly bounced back from that point. So overall, I would say that we've started a new bullish trend for Palantir just in the past couple of weeks. Basically since the end of January 2021, we've been seeing consistently lower highs and lower lows all throughout the trend. But we can see here that over the past couple of weeks, we came back up towards the middle of June and broke above the previous high of the last trend, which was right around the middle of April when, it, we, were, when we were rejected by the 50 period moving average. And we ran all the way up to 2770. We didn't quite touch 2770 with the high being right around $26.50 per share, and then started fading right back down to 2460. So Palantir was overall a bit overbought. We can see when we were touching that 2770 line, and we know from past run-ins with 2770 that there really has to be a big catalyst for Palantir to break above and hold above that level. We were seeing that runoff into demo day and right after demo day where we saw the last clean break of 2770. And ever since then, we've tested a couple of times without really being able to break through that level. Overall, this is a very healthy trend for Palantir, though, and it appears that if we do hit resistance or support at this uh, yellow level of 2460 or 2450, right around that range, that we could set a new higher low. And we've already seen that we've set a higher high, which could indicate a short-term bull trend for Palantir. Now, we still have to worry about 2770, and I could honestly see us trading in this between basically the green and the red support and resistance levels for quite some time, at least until earnings. Now, NASDAQ currently has Palantir's earnings listed for August 10th, so that could be the next big catalyst. This is not set in stone yet, and they've not officially announced this date, so more to come on that. But it could be about a month of trading around in this range. I think that would make a lot of traders happy because I know that a lot of people are still looking to accumulate Palantir for their long-term portfolio, and... There's just some great volatility to trade here. If we're looking around this $22.60 and $27 per share range, you can easily make 10 to 15% just trading in between these levels without a whole lot of risk of Palantir running off without you short of having a major catalyst. Now we know any day a contract could come across that could be a major catalyst and really push Palantir to the next level above $27.70. Um, so, you know, I typically don't recommend just buying and selling and trying to catch the volatility if it's a long-term play for you, but it is great for uh, traders who are looking to capture some of that momentum. 
So I also wanted to take a look at some of the multiples for Palantir. They're still looking pretty high in terms of PE ratio, in terms of enterprise value to sales. We're starting to come back into more reasonable levels as we saw the sell-off happen for Palantir when we were trading at $40 plus per share. It really didn't make sense. Trading here in the mid-20s, we're starting to see the enterprise value to sales come back in line as their sales are increasing year over year. But we can see that the price isn't really increasing that much, up only 4% year to date. So Palantir, if they're able to continue the standard growth rate that they've seen over the past couple of quarters with 40 to 45% growth rate, we'll see that the enterprise value uh, to sales ratio, price to sales ratio falls much more in line with where we would expect some of these companies to be. And we can see here that they're still trading very high at 25.4 uh, price to book. So overall, Palantir in terms of just some of the most basic multiples out there, and again, we're gonna do more fundamental analysis in another video. Um, still a little on the overvalued side. I think that's why we're starting to see some of the pullbacks. And speaking of pullback, we are starting to see ARK Invest offload just a couple of shares over the past couple of weeks. So not really sure exactly what Kathy Wood has in store for Palantir, but if we take a look here at Lucid Tracking, we can see that they've offloaded a little bit over 730,000 shares over the past couple of weeks from the ARK WETF. Now, if we take a look back in time, just at the overall weighting of Palantir within the portfolio, even back at just the beginning of May, Palantir was about 1.6% of the ARK WETF. Coupled with continuous buying of Palantir over time, net buying, of course, there were a couple of weeks where there were some sell-offs, but we've ultimately had overall large buys of Palantir within the ARK WETF, we can see that they've consistently grown their weight over time from being about 1.6% of the ARK WETF to upwards of 2.3% before starting to see a bit too heavy of a weighting within Palantir. And we can see that Kathy Wood has started to sell off just a few shares of Palantir to bring it back sub 2%. So we'll definitely want to keep an eye on this as it progresses, whether or not it's going to be continuous selling within ARCW or whether or not they were just trying to taper it back off towards a more realistic goal of that 1.6 to 1.7% range that we've seen in the past. If we take a look over at ARCK, though, we have seen continuous buying action within ARCK. So again, not a huge sign that Kathy Wood has lost faith in Palantir by any means potentially just a little bit of rebalancing going on in ARK W. Now overall, this was a very condensed video. We've got a few more videos to make on Palantir. I, I'm trying to catch up on basically three months of Palantir action all within just a couple minute video. So let me know down in the comments what you want me to cover on Palantir next. Of course, I owe quite a few videos on Palantir where we can do deeper dives on some of the fundamentals, a little bit more deeper of a dive on some of the price action that we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks because we just did a cursory overview here. And let me know anything else that you'd be very curious to see. I really appreciate you watching until the end, and I look forward to joining you back with the next one. Thanks so much. Catch you in the next one.